Right then, Xavi is staying as Barcelona coach next season. Ravi Yusta, the Barcelona vice president, says Xavi will stay. He's really happy. He's We've brilliant. never opened talks for any other coach. Also, Deco trusts Xavi. It is guaranteed. Uh, Frank's still with us. We welcome in from Madrid. Alex Kirkland uh, joins us. Alex, how much was this a case of, like, Xavi's here, Rafa Marquez is there, we can't afford anyone else, we may as well just stick with him? Yeah, well, listen, we're going to hear from Joanne Laporta, we think, tomorrow on Thursday, giving his reasons publicly, or at least the reasons that he's willing to give publicly, which may not be exactly the, the same thing. So we'll, we'll hear a little bit more and have a better understanding then of, of the club's thinking. I think we've got to think about this in terms of what the club are after and what, what Xavi wants and why the club have made the decision and why Xavi has, has gone with it. In terms of Xavi, remember, when he made this, this, this big call to announce that he was going, he talked about the negative atmosphere around the team. Uh, he talked about the lack of support that, that, that he was getting. Now, those things have changed. That situation has changed. The atmosphere has improved. He's now getting the support, certainly from the club, that he wasn't getting before because rather than briefing that he might get sacked, they've been asking him to stay. Um, in terms of the club, I think you're right. It's about looking at the finances. It's about looking at the alternatives and not being entirely convinced by, by any of them. Um, still, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to not think that come next season, as we've talked about before, we might well be back in, in a similar situation. But right now, like I say, things have improved from where they were. Yes, they, you know, they're out of the Champions League. Yes, they're not going to win La Liga. But the team has been playing better. They have been getting better results. There are a lot of reasons to be optimistic about this team. This team isn't that far away. You look at the talent they've got, the likes of Lamine Yamal and Kubasi and, and Gavi, if he's fit, and Pedri, if he can stay fit, and, and other players as well. They're not a million miles away from the team that won the league just a year ago with Xavi in charge. The other really interesting thing, I think, and the thing we don't know a lot about yet, or certainly enough details about yet, is what the content of these negotiations was between the club and Xavi today, in terms of what conditions the club tried to impose on Xavi and vice versa. I was talking about this this evening with um, ESPN colleague Sam Marston, and there are some suggestions that the club have been looking to make some changes to how Xavi does things, and in particular, Xavi's coaching staff. Some elements of the way the team is coached, the way the team is prepared, that the club haven't been entirely happy about, haven't been convinced by, and they've been looking to say to Xavi, look, would you be willing to make certain changes in terms of personnel behind the scenes in order to stay? Like I say, we, we don't have the full details on that yet, but that's, that's a really interesting aspect, I think, of this in terms of what these sort of talks were between Xavi and Laporta and Deco and others that have ended up with this outcome of Xavi staying until his, his contract is, is due to expire, as it always was in 2025. Alex, are the fans happy with this? Uh, it's hard to say. Of course, you know, still, we always say this, but still Xavi has so much in the bank because of what he was as a player, even what he did as coach. Because remember where they were when he came in, it, it, was, it was a mess. And, and he has made the team better and he has improved the team in all sorts of ways. And they did win a league title last season. And there have been some, some positives as well in the last few weeks, of course, when it really came to it, when it came to the crunch, they, they blew it against PSG mm. in the Champions League and they blew it in El Clasico. And they, in, in, in El Clasico twice, in fact, this season in the league and, and again in the, in the Super Cup. So in those really big moments, the team have been found wanting. But I haven't detected, at least here, a, a real sort of sentiment from fans here. Maybe it's different sort of internationally, maybe in what you see on social media, but from fans here, here in Spain sort of calling for, for Xavi's head. I don't think that's necessarily been the case. Of course, they've been unhappy with aspects of, of the team and the way they've played and what hasn't been going well. But I don't think there's been a real sort of groundswell of anti Xavi sentiment, certainly from fans here. Stick with your instincts. Stick, his instincts were uh, the pressure, yep. the expectations, the, the day to day, all the rigmarole of running this huge football club like a lot of managers go through. And he felt, along with results, that, that that was too much for him, and that was his instincts. And who who was who are we to argue with that? That was fine. You know, we all said, fine, no problem. Barcelona need to move on. Uh, and as Alex said, yeah, their fortunes have got better, but it was a low bar, wasn't it? I mean, the defending was absolutely horrendous. The the, ch the chances of them starting to improve their defensive duties, and he did make some changes, bringing in the youngsters and moving some players like Christensen into midfield. So he takes some credit for that. But it's ironic, really. He's just lost two of the biggest games on the calendar. Well, maybe two he had with scruff in it, but certainly one at the Montjuic. Bellingham steps up, gets a couple, and then this one here, talking about referees and everything again, and, you know, Bellingham scores the winner and is the, uh, is the uh, flavour of the month again. But what... And, I, and Alec, Alex made the point. What happens if six weeks, two months into the season, it's all going pear-shaped, mm. and then 
uh, do you know, I've had enough. I've had enough. Oh, I have pressure. Everybody's on top. We're back at we're <laughs> back at square one. We've rolled the dice and we're back at the start. What is the point? I don't understand. I nearly fell off my chair. Did you? Aye. Yeah. Wow. Well, that way, Hold hopefully. On, can you tell me, right? Can you tell me if the owners at Man City told Pep or told Mourinho or Klopp? We want you to stay, but we want you to change your coaching, the way you coach, and we want you to change your coaching staff. Are you serious? I mean, if, if there was ever a reason to run for the hills, that's it. Because you're getting interference. You are absolutely... You, I mean, you talk about pulling a rug from under you. So, basically, now you're out there... Uh, who's in charge? Right. Madness. Absolute madness. Uh, Frank, how would you feel as a player about this? Um... Uh... Well, it depends if you're on the bench or if you're on the, yes. on the field. If you are, if you were on the bench under Xavi, you would be, you would be disappointed to not see him leaving. Uh, if you are uh, in the first team, in the first eleven, uh, you, you you're quite happy that he can stay. But you know, in my point of view, uh, it's nice to see Xavi still at the head of uh, of that team because he is re really an icon of uh, of Barcelona and, wh and what Barcelona represents, and he knows the club. You know, maybe the fact that they didn't play at the Camp Nou as well uh, maybe uh, an influence in the, in the way that they prepare the game, the motivation of the players. It's not the same approach, I would say. Uh, I want to see something di different from Xavi this next season. But he won the title. Like 10 months ago, he won the title. It's not like he was disappointing, uh, disappointed uh, or disappointing, sorry, uh, uh, since, the, since he signed for the club. He did something good the first year. That wasn't good this year. He lost because of, uh, of the second leg against Paris Saint-Germain, 10 against 11. He lost at the last minute in the, in the, in the, in the Classico. I think, I think I'm going to see him again. I want to see if he can mm. repair stuff and do something good. Yeah, but what was it? But when the pressure... Was, this is the bottom line here with the managers, right? And we see Jurgen Klopp taking a, a step to the side because he's, he's exhausted. Mm -hmm. Running football clubs top to bottom, a lot of these guys, not... Not like the old days when they were signing players and watching games, but you're still in there seven days a week. And I understand, you know, Xavi wins the title. That His first year is fantastic. The second year, it takes a turn, and he has these injuries, and he's getting... And, and basically, he said, I can't take this. No, he looked at a beaten man, didn't he? And, and, nobody, and nobody, nobody thinks any worse of anybody if they say, no. this, I just don't like this pressure. I don't like the expectations. I don't need to be spoken to like this. I don't need to read the newspapers giving me stick. I don't want it. And if you don't want it, don't do it. Because these guys, are, you know, all these top guys like Ancelotti and all these... Year in, year out, they take the good with the bad, the peaks and the troughs, and they stay with it. Travis had one bad year in this job, and he wanted out. What's that tell you? I mean, what's changed? The reasons that he said he was leaving... Well, Nothing's changed. The pressure's off now, isn't it? He's not getting the same media scrutiny. But is he really that... that well, come on, that, but is that, that, does he really way, think... Yeah. Does he really think, oh, it's all right, no. Well, maybe he it, thinks... It won't matter what Maybe he's, he's learned coping mechanisms, how to go forward, how not to let this affect him, how not to bring him down. No. No, but it's, uh, it is. It is. Especially, as Craig said, off the back of being eliminated from the Champions League and losing El Clasico. Okay. Uh, one more thing for you, Alex, before I let you go. Uh, Tebasso, of course, is the head of... Uh, Spanish football saying La Liga will play official matches abroad. I think it could be in the 2025-26 season. The official match in the US will strengthen our position in the North American market, which is the second for La Liga after Spain. Other very competitive leagues are coming, so we can't always do the same thing. They would overtake us. Obviously, the famous 39th game that was cited a few years ago, Alex, all the fan backlash meant that the Premier League backtracked over that. What's been the supporters' reaction over the last 24 hours to this announcement? Yeah, we've never quite seen that same level of backlash here in Spain. And the first important thing to say is this is nothing new from Tebas. This is nothing new from La Liga. Remember back in 2018, six years ago, La Liga wanted to play Barcelona against Girona in Miami. La Liga, they made it official. They officially requested to play that game in Miami. The Federation said no. It turned into a legal battle. Other bodies came out against it as well. In the end, Barcelona dropped out and La Liga stepped back and said, OK, we won't do this for now. But if you look back at what La Liga said, like I say, six years ago in 2018, they said specifically, as soon as possible, we will do this. So they've never shied away from this. This has always been a La Liga objective. As soon as the environment is right, there's also been this legal case going on in the US, which might go all the way up to the Supreme Court between US soccer and FIFA and Relevant, who promote La Liga in the US in terms of 
the, the original decision not to allow that game to to go ahead and the sort of the freedoms that might have been restricted there. So that's the environment around this. But like I say, this is nothing new from La Liga or Tebas. They've always wanted to do this. They've always talked about the importance of this in terms of the growth of the brands. They've always talked about looking to US sports as an example and the way that the, um, playing games abroad has worked uh, for US sports. But in terms of the fan reaction, like I say, it's, it's, something, it's a little bit different here in, in Spain. Uh, the same thing we saw with the Super League. It's very similar, I would say, in terms of the, sort of the visceral reaction we saw from, from fans in the Premier League. just wasn't replicated here in, in Spain at all for all sorts of reasons. So it might well depend on the clubs involved, on, on the game. And this is just a comment from Tebas. La Liga, by the way, um, sources saying this is not an official announcement from Tebas. This was Tebas talking in an interview about an aspiration. Um, but they do feel like they are heading in the right direction and that this is going to happen sooner or later. Great stuff, Alex. As always, thank you very much. All La Liga games this weekend will be played in Spain across the four days. Real Sociedad against Real Madrid kick things off. And then on Sunday, we see the Seville derby. Real Betis against Sevilla. Monday, Barcelona against Valencia. All these games live on ESPN+. Plus.